Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment below if you're so motivated to do so. This is Wonders of a Black Woman. Well, unfortunately, a teen was charged with murder, and they want to charge him as an adult for a Southeast Raleigh High School incident where he ended up stabbing two other students, and one of the students died. Now, unfortunately, this happens all across different schools across America where teens and even younger than that are fighting in school and someone gets seriously hurt. Grief counseling will be available for students here at Southeast Raleigh High School after that tragic day. Take a look at this video that was sent to WREL of the incident. It shows dozens of students in a hallway. You can see one student throwing a punch. We're stopping the video before the student in the red hoodie pulls out a knife. The fight then spills into the gym where more students get involved. We pause the video again when the student in the red hoodie starts swinging the knife. Sherelle McLaughlin says... It was her 14-year-old son who had the knife. He's now charged with murder. She claims he was bullied at school before this incident. And I called the school, and I informed them of that that morning because I told them that something may happen. I don't know. And we're working to find out the names of the student who was killed and the student who was injured. And coming up in the next half hour, you'll hear from a mother of a student who goes here, and she says she's afraid to send her daughter to school. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. First, I want to say may this child rest in peace. Uh, this is the 15, Delvin Farrell, 15, was stabbed at the school. Monday, um, may he rest. And my intention with this video is not to offend anyone, but I'm just going to call it how I see it, and I'm going to speak the truth. You may agree, you may disagree. You're welcome to your opinion, as I am mine. Now, I'm not going to play the fight video. If you're interested in that, you can seek that out if you have not seen it already. But according to the New York Post, and of course, according to the video that I saw, um, the one student that ended up being charged was being surrounded and... The first punch was thrown, not, not by him. And that's when the whole melee brawl took place. Now, the reason why I'm speaking about this is because it may be your child that is being bullied. It may be your child doing the bullying. And I could say this, when you are going to send your child to school and they are being bullied, according to the child's mother who was charged, the, the child who was charged, his mother said that she had been complaining about um he and his sister being threatened his sister was allegedly attacked rolled on as they call it um and the brother had defended the sister and they have been threatening him threatening to roll on him and eventually this happened and the child was afraid for his life the mother had warned the school. The mother had complained to the school. Um, the child had stayed out of school for a little while, thinking things would cool down. And obviously it didn't. They still were determined to attack. Now, when you attack somebody you can't control how they respond and i'm just 
keeping it real. You can't say, oh, well, we're going to roll on him, kick his ass, and he's just going to be left um, with black eyes bloodied and bruised on the ground because we ganged up on him and we attacked him, and that's going to be the end of it. That's, you can't control how someone responds. And unfortunately, this 14-year-old that they're trying to try as an adult um, felt he like his life was threatened. You have to think that just because these are children, it doesn't mean that they don't have those instincts for wanting to survive. You put yourself in that situation. What if you were going to work and a bunch of people were threatening you at work, saying they were going to roll on you, saying they're going to get you? Wouldn't you have a reasonable fear for your life? Wouldn't you have a reasonable fear? Well, these students, they really don't have a choice whether they go to school. You have to go to school. And a lot of times the parents will will, will report that they're being bullied. and the way these teachers look at it, as long as you're not doing nothing to me and you're not my child, it is what it is. They're not going to protect your child. They're not. And so you have these students who feel that they have to protect themselves. They will pick up a book. They will pick up a brick. They will pick up a stick. They will pick up anything. Everybody doesn't just fight mono and mo- hand to hand there everybody's not hand to hand combat somebody you attack them they're going to pick up whatever they can pick up they're going if they feel that their life is in danger they're going to bring something and you know you parents need to make sure that your kid isn't going to school being egged on to form a little wolf pack and attack other students it's not right It's not right to harass and bully someone every day that they have a reasonable fear for their safety because you don't know how that person's going to respond. Someone you hit them or attack them, they just black out and they go ape shit. Some people, you attack them, they'll curl up in a fetal position, ball up in a bun, and let you go to town beating on them. Everybody doesn't respond the same way. And it's unfortunate that this child lost his life and another one was in the hospital. And it's unfortunate that this 14-year-old is being charged for murder, could spend the rest of his life in jail. Now, I think that they were too quick to charge him. They should have assessed the whole situation. But he's black, so of course they want to throw the book at him because they... They look at you as guilty until you prove yourself innocent. And if you get the wrong mix of jury members that just want to see a young black man in jail for the rest of his life, oh, he's basically going to be in jail for the rest of his life, no matter what you prove in court. And so this is just a tragedy all around. The parents need to get together and sue the school. Because the school should have done something about the fact when that this child was being bullied. You are sending your child to school. You expect for them to be safe. You cannot hand your child off to another adult and not expect that adult to keep your child safe. There are laws for negligence and and if if your child is hurt in school when you made complaints that your child was being bullied they have a responsibility to make sure your child is safe you're not sending your child to a jungle you're not sent, dropping your child off in the middle of the woods you're sending your child to school and so <sighs> We can't just allow this stuff to happen. And you see how excited all the kids were at seeing a fight. We've got to stop these kids from thinking that 
it's just like an adrenaline rush for them just to see someone getting hurt. So the mom says she doesn't believe that he took a knife to school, but got it from someone else in the building. The whole situation is terrible, she said. I feel bad for the other family, but in return, I feel bad for my son because he was fighting for his life. It wasn't a fair fight. Just don't think it should have happened like that. So, I mean, I guess the school think that the other kids would just roll on her child beat the living daylights out of them and they just suspend the kids for a couple of days and then that'll be the end of it but it didn't go down like that unfortunately someone lost their life and i think the school is ex extremely negligent so the school was closed today as students comes to grips with the death of a classmate and district review safety protocols the safety protocol is for them to take threats seriously someone is threatening someone's life someone is threatening to assault someone someone has assaulted someone they need to take those things seriously if a kid is threatening a teacher the teacher wouldn't come to school every day with someone threatening to gang up on her and roll on her or him but it's okay when it comes to these kids that's how they look at it School should be a safe haven for our students and staff, the Wake County Superintendent Robert Taylor said. What happened today here today is unacceptable. Of course it's unacceptable, but what are they going to do about it? It takes a tragedy to do something about this. The parents need to fight for their son's life. Now, I'm sorry that that teen died. You know, but these students need to realize that when you attack someone, you can't control how they respond. You can't control how someone responds. You know, I mean, it, you can't, you can't, you can't just go and gang up on someone, think you're going to beat the crap out of them with your buddies. And, and and that's you're just going to give each other a high five while he's lying bleeding on the floor with a black eye. It doesn't always go down like that. It's not okay to hurt someone. And unfortunately, these kids aren't being taught that at home. It's not okay to hurt someone. It's not okay to, to be saying mean, harassing, cruel things to them. And it's not okay to physically assault someone. It's not okay. And it's also not okay for these learning institutions to ignore bullying and harassment claims. Some students take their own lives. Some students uh, drop out of school. Some students resign themselves to being in misery for eight hours a day, five days a week. You as an adult wouldn't put up with going to work at five days a week eight hours a day with somebody threatening to kick your behind and all of that every day. You wouldn't put up with that. So why do children have to put up with that? Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment below if you're so motivated to do so. This is Wonders of a Black Woman. Peace.